Welcome to Postscript from Faithbridge Church. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the message by sitting down with the teacher of the day. Welcome to Postscript. My name is Wayne Risher, and I'm sitting here with Ken Werlein, senior pastor of Faithbridge Church, who just wrapped up another terrific message on marriage. So welcome, Ken, to Postscript. We're glad to have you. So as you know, Postscript is an interactive time where we have some questions. Folks are interested in going a little deeper in study. So uh, looks like we have three questions here we'd like to, to press into, see how we go with that. So during the sermon, Ken, you mentioned a little situation with you and Suzanne in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said that uh, in response to Suzanne, you said, I love you, I'm committed to you, I'm never quitting, mm -hmm. which is the same thing that God says to us. Sure. And one of the points you said was uh, loving us as God loves us. We convert that over. So what is the next step then? Once you've said that, you've demonstrated the love, is sacrifice the next piece? Sure. Well, when you move to verse 2, then you're moving to the, the Christ aspect of it. And that has to do with the cross and the crucifixion. And the only way you're going to ever get to a resurrection is through the crucifixion. Something's going to have to die. So, you know, I felt like I talked enough about our story in that instance. But let me stay with that illustration to just expand upon it. So someone asks, well, how do you really die to something? Well, I'll stay with my perfectionistic tendencies, which can grate on anybody, people that I work with as well as people that I am at home with. And that's just the way I'm, I'm wired. It's just, but, uh, and to some extent, I probably can't change that. Um, but that does not mean that I must not die to the way that I'm handling that or dispensing that or visiting that on other people. Okay. That's where I've had to have several things. I've done some personal counseling on that, actually meeting with a, a therapist and a counselor to try to figure out what, what, what is your drive in there? What, what's going on you know, about that? I think that's an important aspect in my journey. And then having some honest friends friends here at the church, accountability brothers, um, and then certainly Suzanne, who will just speak truthfully and saying, hey, you're going overboard. You're, you're too wound up. And through doing that over and over and over the wrong way, where you have to own it and repent and confess and apologize, and you do that enough times, you start to learn oh, how to get out in front Right. of those impulses before you say what you're going to say. Um, and, and so it's just a process. Uh, unfortunately, in this instance, it hasn't been a, a quick death, but I think it's more dead than it was 15 years ago. Uh, and I'm still moving on in further sanctification in, in that area. Um, but for most of I mean, sometimes God really does a, a, a zappo, transformation and somebody never had the thought again or they never had the urge again or they never praise the Lord when that happens. This hadn't come about that way. This has been more of a methodical. I, I regularly have to be reminded, okay, this is sort of what rears its ugly head when you're fatigued, when you're kind of worn out, you've got to watch, you've got to kill that, kill it, kill it, crucify it, or else you're going to hurt somebody. You've done this enough times. You don't want to have to do that again and repent and apologize. And you know, <laughs> so it's methodical. Yeah. So it's, it's a journey. It's a journey. Yeah, I, I like that in process. Yeah. When, when would it not be appropriate for me to die to self? When, when is that boundary yeah. exhausted? Yeah, and that's a great, a great question. On the one hand, never. We're, we're always called to die to ourselves. We're always called to forgive. How, Jesus, 70 times seven, how many times should I forgive, Lord? Seven times, that's huge, right? No, Jesus says 70 times seven. So on the one hand, no. Now, on the other hand, I would be concerned about one category of people hearing a message like this. 
And that would be the abused person. Okay. The person who's being, the, the wife who's being battered uh, or, or s s sexually abused or something along those lines. And I know, unfortunately, of situations where that type of abuse happens in the name of Christ, where you have typically the male doing, you know, thus and so and saying, you know, I'm doing this because I'm the leader of the home and I'm the ruler of the family and, you know, no whammo. And well, in that instance, loving unconditionally and loving sacrificially might need to look a little bit different. Um, specifically how? Well, this person clearly has some sort of issue going on inside their own soul that has not been dealt with. And so by just being abused repeatedly, uh, we're enabling this person to continue in his dysfunction mm. and just to continue to do these things that are not God honoring, even though he might say this is honoring God. It's not honoring God or child abuse or these sorts of, it's not honoring God. So the way uh, that we're going to need to love sacrificially and unconditionally in that instance is uh, to, to build some space in. I think of how King David uh, of old would play his harp and, uh, but then King Saul, you know, would be overcome with this rage and he'd start throwing his spears at King Saul. And Well, David would scamper on, you know, you, you have to get out of the way. If the spears start coming your direction, you, you need to go ahead and take your, take your harp and, and, and scoot. And so I think it's important to say in some instances, the way that we're going to love most conditional, unconditionally and sacrificially is to build in some space to bring in a community mm -hmm. to see, is this healthy? Is what's going on? Maybe to bring in an authority. Is this healthy? What's going on here? Is this normal? It feels normal to me because it's how we've done it for so many years, but is this right? Is this healthy? Is this normal? No, probably in that instance, we're going to need to, to, to do something else. And probably this person uh, is going to need to learn more correctly what it means to love like Christ because he's not doing it. You know, he may think he's doing it. Um, so I would just add that caveat because I'm always concerned for the, you know, out of several thousand people, you're going to have a handful who are in abusive situations. And I would not want them to misinterpret the message as just a, okay, well, I just got to go back and get slugged some more um, in the name of Jesus. Um, that, that would be a, a gross misunderstanding of... That's of, a good, healthy yeah. answer, yeah. yeah. Well, let's, let's move for a minute to one other group. Okay. okay. Let's say that I'm single okay. uh, or I'm unmarried. I'm at some station of life and I was married and now I'm, now I'm finding myself single. You mentioned this spider web of things I want in a future spouse right. and I, uh, these things. So if you take those uh, and, and I say, I, I don't want to weave a web like this to catch someone, uh, what filter do I use then for the next person? Do I, do, what am I looking yeah. for? Well, I mean, to some extent, you, you can't help yourself. You will weave a web. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. there, there is something that is drawing you towards another person. And so you're going to weave your web and the other person's going to weave their web. And that, that dynamic is just something that's built into the attraction aspect of how God has wired us. I'm convinced to get us in that dynamic where then we can start to work on our selfishness. So to some extent, you'll not be able to avoid it. But there is a question that maybe lies underneath what I think you're asking. And that is, uh, how do I make sure that I don't catch the wrong person mm -hmm. or that I don't get caught mm -hmm. in the web of somebody else? Um, and I would say several things. Okay. Uh, certainly the, the, the further along, the older I get, the more I go cut straight to the quick and ask somebody who's excited about the person they're dating, tell me about their walk with Jesus. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I used to tiptoe about, you know, do they go to church? Well, sometimes they go to church. No, 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 no. I, I want to I wanna know, do they, tell me about their walk with Jesus. Cause I know you have a vibrant walk with Jesus. And if they don't have a walk with Jesus, 
then you haven't any business getting any further into this thing. Uh, I've just seen too many train wrecks that uh, way. Your, your odds are stacked way against you. So I want to know uh, about, uh, let's talk about the Lord and your walk with the Lord and his or her walk with the Lord. And then I think there's, there's great value, and God's word tells us there's great value in community. That's, that's the whole reason, well, not the whole reason, but one of the great reasons that he's given us this community so that when one is weak, the other can be strong and strengthen us and speak truth to us. I'm thinking of a person who even uh, shared with a dear, dear friend, no, I'm see not in these words, but she could have said, I'm seeing spider webs that you're not seeing. <laughs> don't marry the person, don't marry the person, don't marry the person. But she went ahead and married the person, overriding her, her friend's counsel. Mm -hmm. Well, she regrets it. The friend was able to see the webs. Right, right, that's good. A and community can, because the angle is such, in, in the, the, the lighting is such, so if you will, that they can see the webs. And they you know, dear friend of mine, you're not seeing something, and we're seeing this, and we just feel like we have to tell you. And hopefully, you, if you're the single person, will be humble enough to say, well, it's not what I want to hear, but I love you and I know of your friendship and your love for me and your commitment to me over all of these years uh, enough that I'm going to listen to that and I'm going to slow this down. So I would really lean heavily into community, just having... And it's one of the reasons that Suzanne and I felt so good about moving forward in our marriage, I was an old guy by then. I was 35. She was 30. And so we weren't just out of college. We both had some relationships ourselves, uh, you know. But there was something about the community of several key people who knew us both mm -hmm. and were speaking, um, you know, into to both of our lives. And it's, it's very bolstering. Yeah, that's good wisdom. Well, thank you so much for the clarification and going a little deeper on these questions. So that's good. And thank you for joining us for Postscript. I hope you'll be back next week as we have Ben Stewart uh, with us at Postscript. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org forward slash postscript.